Hi, what's happening? I'm about Rico from Street Scores. And since when? Apparently, according to Adam Schefter himself, NFL players are asking their agents to be traded to the Washington Commanders. Of course, you know after hearing that, I'm putting together a trade deadline wish list. You knew that had to come. And shouts out to my boy Terrell for asking for one of those in the call-in show in the previous live stream after the Bears game. And shouts out to my dog Ivory for requesting one as well. We're doing that today. And I'm letting you know right now, chaos is on the way. If players are asking to be traded to us and we're looking to potentially get some guys and be some buyers, don't be surprised if we pull off more than one trade before Tuesday. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you still farm that like button, still farm the subscription button, and still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Of course, I will be live streaming this upcoming game against the Giants, so make sure you pull up for all four quarters, play-by-play -play analysis and all of that. So stay tuned. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this video, man. Let's get it. Adam. Adam. All right, so this all started at 7.01 p.m. and it's taken me that long to put together my wish list. I had already been working on it like for the past week or two, really the past couple of weeks with some of the names that I've wanted. But after seeing this tweet from Adam Schefter, I was like, oh, let me go ahead and wrap this up, do all of my research and everything and make sure I get a trade deadline wish list together because we got to talk about that after talking about this. He tweeted at 7.01 p.m. earlier tonight that here's a sentence that hasn't been written or uttered this century. Since before Dan Snyder owned an NFL franchise, players want to wind up in Washington playing for the Commanders. And he never lied. And I also want to point out the fact that Adam Schefter is about as in the in crowd as you can possibly be when it comes to like all of these reporters that talk for ESPN, NFL Network and all of these guys, even guys including like Jeremy Fowler and all of these people. Nobody's probably as in as Adam Schefter is. He may not necessarily be to the level of War Janarski, Adrian War Janarski or Shams, but he's like right at the tier below that for NFL. He's probably the go-to guy for that. So if he's saying that, I definitely believe him. I believe he definitely has a lot of trustworthy sources and we've already talked about in previous videos how the command have tried to acquire edge rushers and receivers in, in, throughout the past couple of weeks in trades. So I already know that we're buyers on our end, and it's beautiful to hear that players on the other end want to be bought by us. Amazing. So going to his ESPN article, which is titled Sources, Players Want to Be Traded to the Commanders at the Deadline. He said, in recent weeks, there have been players who privately have stated or told their agents that they wanted to be traded to the commanders per league sources told ESPN. It's possible that the commanders could comply by Tuesday's 4 p.m. Eastern time trade deadline. So mark that on your calendar. Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern time is up till there. We can go crazy. The commanders have explored the cornerback market and also could use added help at wide receiver according to league sources. And I'm going to probably do that in a separate video because that was reported while I wasn't home. But then this came out. I had to talk about this. We'll probably talk about that later on tonight. But he also continued to say, but even if the commanders cannot pull off any trades by the deadline, the fact that certain players would like to land in Washington bodes well for this franchise and free agency and in years to come, league sources told ESPN. These are all coming from league sources. These aren't even Adam Schefter's words. So he's even thinking ahead, like, first of all, right now, present time, players want to be traded to the commanders. And then even league sources, people are talking around the NFL right now, I guess GMs, coaches, whoever, all of these agents that are in the in crowd right now, that know what's going on in the NFL are saying that also be on the lookout for free agency next year. Because, I mean, they didn't even include the fact that we killed it in free agency year one before we even played a single game. Adam, she Adam Peters and those guys killed it in free agency. We signed the most free agents out of any NFL team before we got to training camp. And we signed them to like very team friendly level contracts too. Like we had the best free agency out of the entire NFL. Even a lot of neutral national analysts and experts agreed that the Washington Commanders had the best, if not the best, at least one of the best free agencies in the entire NFL. That was before we won a single game. That was fresh off of going... What do we go like four and 13 last year or something like that? So, I mean, now after what we've done so far this season and how I feel we're going to end up 
finishing this season, it's only going to be even more chaotic for us in a great way. And again, that's not even just Adam Schefter saying that. That's league sources around the NFL having that feeling that impending doom is on the way for the rest of the NFL once we get to that offseason, man. But he also continued with his article saying it is a function of new ownership a new front office, a new coaching staff, and maybe most importantly, rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels, who is contending not only for the NFL's rookie of the year, he's got that on lock in my opinion, but also potentially the most valuable player. And I just did a video earlier today, go check that out if you haven't yet, breaking down all of the people that saying that Jaden Daniels should be MVP, at least at this point so far in the season. He continued in his article saying, Daniels has helped turn around a franchise that is now 6-2 and two and in first place in the NFC East entering Sunday's game against the Giants, a team that explored but could not trade up to draft the former LSU star. The Giants wanted him. They couldn't get him because we refused to let them get him because we wanted him. Hey, man, shouts out to them. And let's go ahead and beat them to go 7-2. and two. But continuing with the article, Daniels is coming off of a week in which he made the play of the NFL season. His 52-yard game-winning Hail Mary touchdown pass to Noah Brown that lifted the Washington Commanders to an 18-15 victory over the Chicago Bears last Sunday. Daniels' pass alone stood out, but after the game, so did his actions. As the Washington's locker room rejoiced, the one commander's official noticed Daniels at his locker watching everyone else in the, rock, the room celebrate. Daniels looked calm, composed, and seemed as if the dramatic victory was what he expected to happen that day, according to the team official. In his rookie year, Daniels already carries himself like a confident, seasoned player. I love hearing that. Now, the commanders have put themselves in a position to compete for a division title and a playoff spot, but also, just as important, shifted the perception of this franchise. It didn't even take Adam Peters an entire season to do that amazing stuff from him I already told y'all when we hired him back in February things were going to be different but I didn't even expect it to be to this level continuing with the article the commanders are off of their first six and two starts since 2008 and are off to a 4-0 start at home for the first time since 2005. That's crazy. Daniels, the number two overall pick in the NFL draft, has completed 71.8% of his passes, the second best percentage in the entire NFL, for 1,700... 36 yards, seven touchdowns, and just two interceptions while also rushing for 424 yards and four scores. According to ESPN Research, Daniels is the second player in the NFL history with 1,500 passing yards and 400 rushing yards through his first eight career games, joining another Washington rookie star, Robert Griffin III in 2012. But just to let you know, me personally, I feel like this is a completely different situ from, situation from Robert Griffin III. I feel like this has far more long-term potential to it, but I'm not even about to dive into that in this video. I've already talked about it in videos and live streams. Finishing up with the article for years decades even Washington was viewed as an NFL wasteland a toxic environment plagued by issues under Snyder's ownership that dragged down the franchise remember we were voted dead last in that free agency survey for top landing spots and free agency by all NFL I think every single NFL player in survey we were voted dead last two years in a row since they've been doing it I highly doubt we'll be dead last by the time they do it next year I'm pretty sure we're going to be somewhere in the top five arguably even number one one but to finish up the article but with all of the changes the commanders have made the newest and ultimate sign of how much they changed can be gauged by the fact that players want to be there in washington by the deadline you have players out there basically sitting at the edge of their seats hoping that they get traded to the washington commanders before this trade deadline since when since when and so since the trade deadline is tuesday 4 p.m that will give teams another week to fully, well, another weekend, another set of games to fully understand where they stand in the NFL pyramid and tier list right now. Like if we beat the Giants again this weekend, tomorrow, sitting seven and two almost guarantees that we should be aggressive and go be major buyers at the trade deadline not just buyers but let's go all in on this season right now i mean not necessarily all in to where your mortgage in the future as far as like a whole giving up all kinds of cap space and you know trading away great players and things like that. but whatever you got to do to become good now i'm not saying pull a rams like they did a few years ago where they won the super bowl and then immediately after after that they were just completely trash but they already knew they were putting all of the eggs in one basket no we don't want to do that we want to go follow the chiefs model basically or you know follow what the Texans kind of did last year going into this year but I think we're already further ahead of them and what they did last year at this point compared to where they were at this point last year and also feel like we're going to be further ahead of them in year two than they are right now in year two but the Chiefs are a great example of where we need to strive to be to where you're making moves and you're, you're paying the guys you need to whatever you got to do to build a Super Bowl roster but you're not necessarily just mortgaging in your entire future all eggs in one basket type of situation that's what I'm hoping that we do but also on the other 
other side of that, if we beat the Giants tomorrow, the Giants will be two and seven. And now it's painfully obvious that it's time for teams like the Giants to be sellers, which takes me to my next point, which teams are potentially looking to be trade deadline sellers and who are the most likely trade candidates from those play from those teams that the commanders may be interested in especially at positions of need i would note wide receiver corner edge rusher and then offensive tackle right now due to injury but let's start with the panthers well technically we started with the giants we're gonna get there again let's start with the panthers they are one and seven and the season is over and even though they already said that jc horn is not available and jc horn is admittingly pretty injury prone i personally still want him and i think a trade that could, could still potentially make sense especially if they are willing to give him away for like a third round pick or later and remember we have two third round picks and the dolphins are two and five right now and the more they lose the better that third round pick that we got from them via the eagles the better it even looks and so maybe they'd be willing to take the dolphins third round pick but we get to keep our own who knows but the Dolphins did get to a back and everybody else in, in, on their team is, is trying to believe and rescue their season right now. So we'll see what's going on there. We'll monitor that situation. But as far as what we need, which is naturally corner and wide receiver and then again, offensive tackle due to recent injuries, the Panthers player that we are most likely to trade for would probably be J.C. Horn at this point, especially since Joe Wood Jr. wants to run a very aggressive man cover blitzing defense. And we just don't have the right guys to do that right now we don't at least have enough of the right guys to run the defense that he wants to run that's why we kind of switch back and forth between the defense he wants to run then we get burned and then he goes into this soft zone defense that's kind of like well this is what we got to do because we don't have enough jc horns on our roster right now mike sanford still is getting better and better but outside of him we can't necessarily run that defense with the guys that we have now of course like i've been saying for weeks i think edge rusher would actually fix our coverage problems even more than corner but i feel like a, a really good corner we're gonna talk about that later on in the video in all pro level corner that it would actually make a lot of sense to get we'll get there when we get to that team we're going team by team right now and again like i talked about with the giants earlier if we beat them they will be two and seven and the name i'm hearing about coming up the most right now is my georgia dog edge rusher aziz Ajalari. there was a report just a few minutes ago before i started even recording this video that his name has been heating up in trade talks around the nfl so it sounds like he's very likely and the most likely giants player to end up being moved before tuesday 4 p.m and the commanders have been confirmed to be shopping around for edge rushers like zadarius smith of the browns that's been confirmed from multiple sources and then another player that may be available for trade from them quite as kept is cornerback deontay banks i don't think it's very likely at all so don't get me confused there but deontay and the giants have not been seeing eye to eye the last couple of weeks and maybe they just go ahead and recoup whatever value they could get from their 2023 first round pick just from last year's draft i mean you never know maybe they're just like we're not seeing eye to eye this is not going to work culture wise long term wise let's go ahead and get some value in return but maybe more than likely they see it as it's just a bump in the road we'll hold on to them and then we'll see what happens later but you never know it'd be crazy because if we ended up with both emmanuel forbes and deontay banks first round corners from that 2023 draft just last year that would be insane and Deontay is clearly the better player between the two. So maybe Adam Peters and Dan Quinn could make up for the mistake that Rivera and Mayhew made last year taking Emmanuel Forbes over Deontay Banks, who is from the DMV. But then again, that's probably too far gone. I mean, granted, would he prefer to jump and play for the Commanders? I'm pretty sure. But he's talked so much trash towards Terry McLaurin and this entire team. It may not even be a good culture fit for us. But of course, if we were to trade for him, he would suck it up and be happy about the fact that he's going from the terrible Giants to the great Commanders. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that much of a problem but from the outside looking in it doesn't sound very likely just because of that alone and then also moving on how about the titans i mean if they lose to the patriots this weekend they would fall to one in seven and even though i highly doubt they this would ever happen because you can't trade away jonathan allen while he's hurt and on the injured reserve lifts like he currently is right now and you would have to trade him for this potential thing to even make sense but if you are into pipe dreams or fantasies or disney movies then maybe the titans will be willing to trade away their best player on defense in defensive tackle jeffrey simmons or and i already did a breakdown on this on this player like a couple of weeks ago 
because this one could actually be a very realistic possibility here unlike jeremy simmons jeffrey simmons maybe we could go ahead and trade for edge rusher harold landry and if he's only going for like a third rounder like some people predicted like a couple of weeks ago which made me do that video then i'd do that trade right now please i would definitely take it again jonathan allen out for season javante john baptiste not out for season but still currently on injured reserve Dorrance armstrong's banged up cleveland farrell's been dealing with a knee injury all since all the way back to like training camp i would still take on some additional edge rusher help and again i don't even need to prove my side of it again there's been confirmation that the commanders even called the cleveland browns for the zadarius smith so they even feel like they need edge rusher so hey man harold landry's there i'm pretty sure they wouldn't trade away a jeffrey simmons but harold landry apparently may be a name that's up and trade on the trading block right now now speaking of the patriots if they lose to the titans instead of them beating the titans they would then be two and seven but they would never trade away Christian Gonzalez. So I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know that now. Even without injury prone, he's been so far in his young career. So we're just gonna go ahead and move past him quickly. But just to go ahead and put that name out there, I wanna make sure I touch bases with some Christian Gonzalez. I'm at least making the call. For every name I mentioned in this video, even as impossible as it sounds, like Jeffrey Simmons and, and Deontay Banks and, and Christian Gonzalez, I'm at least calling to see like, hey man, y'all y'all tripping? Remember when D-Hop got traded to the Cardinals? I remember a lot of us were like, wait, that's all it took? That's all you had to give up for him. So I just, hey, at least check. Please, I'll never, I'll never forget that lesson we learned with DeAndre Hopkins. This happened several times with other players, but the DeAndre Hopkins one just really just stuck with my heart this, the strongest because I was like, there's no way that's all he was going for. There's no way Rivera didn't go and make that move if he knew that it existed. There, He just must not have even made the call to even check. But my point is the Patriots definitely are in big sale mode right now, but I just don't see any trades that really make sense, especially for any like receivers, offensive tackles, or edge rushers. Cornerback wise though, maybe jonathan jones he wouldn't necessarily be like a huge upgrade like a game changer like a deontay banks if you're projecting based on the future or jc horn if he stays healthy or the guy we're going to talk about later on in this video that's probably my favorite trade candidate based on the talent and and a blend of how realistic the trade could possibly end up being so that we'll talk about him later as far as corners go so he wouldn't be that type of level upgrade but he would still at least be a slight one nonetheless so if you just want to at least make a slight upgraded corner maybe you can go ahead and get a jonathan jones he wouldn't come in and necessarily be your cornerback one but you would be a better team with him on your team then you also have the jacksonville jaguars and i'm sure most people did not expect them to be this bad this season and they're on a bye week right now which will keep them at two and six going into the next week and i'm personally good on wide receiver christian kirk i'm so good especially with that contract no thanks he's not worth it at all to me but then there's linebacker for isade olakun i still i hope i pronounced that right. i still can't pronounce that correctly but i highly doubt that they move him but he would be a great fit for us right now like puzzle piece level fit because i really like jordan mcgee's potential but he may not be ready this season to give us what we need out of the linebacker group uh, especially coverage wise specifically because i think he did maybe play a little bit against the bears but it wasn't enough to even notice he was out there he missed all of like most of training camp he missed all of the preseason he's a fifth round rookie we can't necessarily expect him to to pull up and and ball out for us in his rookie year after missing so much precious time i think i think the bears game was his season debut he only played a couple of snaps there and we kind of need some guys that can be ready to go right now because we're trying to contend it's not only just about the playoffs we still got to win more games to make it to the playoffs to win this division and right now we're currently the second seed you got to keep winning to keep that second seed or even to possibly compete to try to get that number one seed and, uh, and, and take the, the the lions out of that and make them the number two seed so we can get a bye week to start the playoffs that would be beautiful but my point is oh lacoon man he's elite in coverage especially when it comes to linebacker wise like he's elite maybe georgia bulldog trayvon walker the edge rusher i mean he's not living up to the number one overall pick expectations necessarily but i just doubt that one big time as well just like jeffrey simmons highly doubt they would trade him away probably even less likely for trayvon walker to be traded than even jeffrey simmons but a facade Ola Kuhn, man. hey man y'all might want to at least check in to see if they're willing to do it but then again this is probably a team that you can't convince they're sellers right now they should be but they're probably telling themselves we're not sellers but maybe slot corner jerry and jones if we want to upgrade over no igbenogany there i mean who has been solid for us no igbenogany's been solid but with mike samra still permanently moved out the outside corner jerry and jones at 23 year old could definitely be a better long-term option for us in the slot over no igbenogany and then how about the saints who started this season on 
fire and then the wheels just suddenly fell off even before Derek Carr got hurt the wheels fell off so it's not even just because Derek Carr got hurt but I doubt they lose the Carolina but even if they did beat them this up tomorrow this upcoming Sunday that improvement the three and six after beating the terrible Panthers would not stop them from being sellers at the trade deadline if they were already feeling that way before that win and I doubt they trade us wide receiver Chris Olave so we'll go ahead and move that out the way but how about elite cornerback Marshawn Lattimore hey hear me out he would be the perfect fit for Joe Witt Jr. and what he wants to do with this defense right now. Perfect. even An even better fit than J.C. Horn, than all of these other corners we can talk about. Marshawn Lattimore is arguably the best fit available for what he literally wants a, a corner to do. Just to completely erase a receiver from the game. Just man coverage. And then we can allow everybody else to blitz and, and to confuse the quarterback and all types of things. That would be perfect and he's a pretty big cap hit in both 2025 and 2026 along with 2024 right now most nfl teams can't afford to pay him through his entire contract especially these next two seasons most notably guess who can't the saints themselves let's talk about it because guess who can the commanders did y'all know that the saints are projected to be 76 million dollars over the salary cap in 2025 right now they are 76 million dollars in the hole for the 2025 season right now and they already extended alvin kamar shouts out to my dog from atlanta over there so they already made their decision on who they're prioritizing they definitely chose alvin kamar over marshall Lattimore because there's just no way they're going to be able to finesse enough cap space to make that make sense to keep both of them on the team at this point i highly doubt it and it just doesn't look like Marshawn Lattimore is going to be able to fit on this team long term they just don't have a cap space they need cap space and we need an elite corner so there's mutual interest right there getting Marshawn Lattimore would instantly make us strong contenders you could argue easily like one of those serious Super Bowl contenders I mean looking at the rest of our schedule we had somebody that could take George Pickens AJ Brown CeeDee Lamb and Drake London out of games I love our chances of winning any game remaining on our schedule and also making some serious noise in the playoffs. Imagine Lattimore as cornerback one, San Francisco as cornerback two, and St. Juice as cornerback three, and the guy that covers like the bigger receivers. Like maybe he covers Kyle Pitts or, or, or Drake London, and then Marshawn Lattimore covers the best non-tall corner, or even the tall corners. We've seen Marshawn Lattimore battle Mike Evans and do really well against him. So Marshawn Lattimore can cover whoever we need him to, and then Benjamin St. Juice just find a way to fit in. No Ibanagini solid in the slot. That is an elite cornerback group. I feel like he upgrades us that much to be able to move everybody else down the depth chart at least one spot, and you put Marshawn Lattimore at cornerback one. That's arguably the best trade we we can make right now as far as realistic trades that's why like i alluded to earlier that's the guy who i was talking about when we're talking about talent fit and how realistic the trade could potentially be i think marshall Lattimore is the best trade if i had to get one guy off my wish list it would be that one because again some of these other guys that we're that we've already talked about and that we're going to talk about in this video are just not very realistic but that one perfect blend of realistic talent and fit beautiful and then and also i mean he's probably tired of being on the saints that are just going downhill they don't look like they're on a positive trajectory at all so why not go ahead and jump on board with the commanders he's probably one of the people that told agents and, and, and espn sources and adam Schefter that he wants to land on the commanders i wouldn't be surprised at all now how about the raiders if they lose to the Bengals this week, which is very likely, they will be 2-7. and seven. And the Raiders have already said that they don't plan on trading them anyway, but even Thomas Dim Dimitrov, I hope that's a Dimitrov, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, said that trading for Max Crosby, the Commanders and Adam Peters trading for Max Crosby makes too much sense. They already showed they are in sell mode with the Devontae Adams trade, so just go ahead and get as many draft picks as you can to build around my Georgia dog, Brock Bowers, who's already arguably the best player on the team outside of Max Crosby. Do whatever it takes to get him a great quarterback and build through the draft. And then I've already talked about the Cleveland Browns in several videos over the past few weeks, but most notably the video when I broke down why the Commanders should trade for Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, who we've already talked about in a separate video in itself, Greg Newsom, Denzel Ward, and Jeremiah Wusakormore. Already did videos on all of those guys, so go check that out if you want to deep dive into that. Y'all already know where I stand there. I, I, I would say, as far as realistic goes, because I'm just going to go ahead and exclude, my, exclude Miles Garrett as far as realistic, but as far as realistic goes, Zadarius Smith, and the, no, probably Denzel Ward, Zadarius Smith, and then Greg Newsom. And I don't know if you can fit Jeremiah Wusakormore in there somewhere. Maybe 
may be, honestly, it may be Jeremiah Denzel Ward, Zadarius Smith, and then Greg Newsome. Of course, Miles Garrett would be number one, but I don't really consider him realistic. Denzel Ward may not even necessarily be realistic, nor Jeremiah Wusakor more, but Zadarius Smith is probably the most realistic combination of team fit with something that we need and realistic so he's probably the number one candidate that's why there's already been reports confirmed reports that we've literally already called about Zadarius Smith now if the Browns lose to the Chargers this weekend they will be two and seven and maybe it would be time to trade away one of those players and try to build through the draft like the Raiders especially since Deshaun Watson's contract is going to prevent you from having any fun or activity in free agency so right now the Raiders and the Browns and including the Saints as well have to build through the draft free agency is not the answer for them right now and then I'm just going to go ahead and skip the Dolphins because even though I want them to lose every game for the rest of this season so that their third round pick that we got from them through the Eagles keeps rising higher and higher in the draft order, I don't think anybody can convince them to punt on the season right now and become sellers at the trade deadline. Even if they do lose to the Bills this weekend and end up being 2-6, and six, I mean, I just don't think it's... I don't think they're going to become sellers, even though that's very likely to happen. Them being two and six is actually very like, I don't see them beating the Bills right now, but there's just good luck convincing them to be sellers. And then same thing with the Jets. Good luck telling them that they should be sellers. I mean, the Dolphins and the Jets are by far the worst buyers right now at the trade deadline, but you cannot convince them to sell on this season at all. Even with as bad as their records are and will be after this weekend, I just, I don't see it. And then now let's talk about the Bengals. And they may not necessarily be sellers, and I feel like they have a high chance of beating the Raiders to move the 4-5 and five on the season, but they are struggling to find a way to pay both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And who are they going to prioritize? Jamar Chase, if anything, if they can only pay one of them. Right now, they can barely pay either of them. So they should just go ahead and trade T. Higgins to the Commanders for cheap before he leaves in free agency for nothing. Makes too much sense. I've already talked about it in another video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. And I know trades between division rivals are highly unlikely, and with how much the Cowboys are constantly on TV no matter how bad they are good luck trying to convince them or their team their players their coaching staff Jerry Jones their fans to be sellers at the trade deadline good luck with that one but Michael Parsons has foreshadowed following Dan Quinn to Dallas so many times now so many different moments over the last few months he's just mentioned hey man Dan Quinn go somewhere I'm going with him or talking to Trevon Diggs on his podcast the past few weeks hey Dan Quinn that culture is different we miss that here in Dallas or uh, talking about Jaden Daniels top five quarterback but Dak Prescott isn't he's not even top 10 in my opinion things like that like he's foreshadowing so much love towards the commanders and his potential to jump to come to us man you just never know man I mean I'm not gonna lie their team is going nowhere fast. Bad team, no cap space to improve the team, nothing going on positive future-wise. Their outlook in long term is not looking good. And maybe Michael Parsons can lash out enough to force them to trade him to us for something way cheaper than expected. But I do need to add to the fact that I doubt this happens as well. I doubt we end up with Michael Parsons. But if we were to make a trade with the Cowboys, I could only really see it being Michael Parsons if anybody else. I don't see that happening or really any other trade, honestly, for them. And then the Rams are trying to make a comeback on this season. So we're skipping them. Same with the Seahawks, the 49ers, and the Buccaneers. But the Colts, maybe they're in disarray after benching Anthony Richardson. But I doubt it. But I don't have any immediate names that I just look at the Colts roster. And I'm like, that's a realistic trade that we could go for right there. So we're going to skip past them as well. But again, after they bench Anthony Richardson, maybe they, they may go into sell mode. Who knows? We'll see. If, if I get like an announcement or report that they are in sell mode, then I'll do a deep dive on their roster. But just at like a quick glance, I don't really see anybody on there that would make a lot of sense for for us to trade for or for them to trade away i mean they have good players that i would love to add to the commanders but there's just certain guys like young draft picks and things like that they're not going to trade those guys away but moving on now imagine what it's going to be like in 2025 with that free agency when it hits after this season like adam Schefter brought up earlier i mean we're talking about players getting traded right now imagine what they can when they can leave for free in free agency where we don't even have to trade for them i mean winning produces more winning that's what happens when you build a culture we are way ahead of schedule but let's keep the foot on the gas and also remember cap space wise we're talking 2025 we have the second most cap space in the nfl the only team with more cap space than us are the new england patriots but they are not a top free agency destination so we have the most cap space out of all nfl teams that 
NFL free agents actually want to go play for right now. Y'all don't have that Bill Belichick discount anymore. And y'all are not winning. Drake may have shown potential, but not enough to where these veteran free agents around the NFL are going to want to, you know, hit up the New England Patriots like, hey, man, I want to come there this offseason and things like that. We are the top team. We're going to be one of the, if not literally the number one free agency destination in the NFL. And then the fact that we have the second most cap space in the NFL, only behind the Patriots, who will not be a top free agency destination in 2025, makes us even more attractive because I'm pretty sure veterans are looking around like hey man they are not only really good they have the money to pay me what I really want to get and then some people may even be willing to take somewhat of like a discount to be a part of a great team that can put them in position to win some Super Bowls in the near future so be ready and buckle up because this trade deadline leading up to Tuesday 4 p.m. is going to be pretty chaotic for us but 20 2025 free agency is going to be insane and literally as I'm wrapping it up I see at pro football talk just tweeted Saints cornerback Marshawn Lattimore could be on the move by Tuesday go make it happen somebody already tweeted right under it get ready to learn commander I told y'all I'm telling y'all Marshawn Lattimore let's do it but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video please still follow that like button still follow the subscription button still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned to all of the content really appreciate y'all of course let me know in the comment section how you feel about my trade deadline wish list if there were any names that I left off that you felt like I should have added please let me know in the comment section because I always try to read and reply to the comments as much as possible just in general but I also go there because y'all make me smarter y'all point out some mistakes I've made y'all correct me on some of my errors and y'all also put me on to some players that I maybe I overlooked so I really appreciate y'all for that and of course let me know how you feel about everything I said any of the players that I brought up which ones that out of the guys that I've listed do you want the most do you feel like Marshawn Lattimore makes the most sense when it comes to the three main factors of talent fit and how realistic it, it could potentially be let me know how you feel about all of that please do not leave this video without leaving a like I really appreciate y'all I'm coming with more videos catch y'all later I'm out